family of triangles can be traced back several millennia to Egyptian and Babylonian mathematics. However, they lacked the concept of an angle measurement, now measured in degrees, and as such were limited to studying only the sides. Trigonometry as it is today was born from the minds of ancient Greek mathematicians, and astronomy was the driving force behind such advancements. One Hipparchus of Nicaea, who lived from 180 to 125 BCE in what is now Turkey, compiled the first trigonometric table, and is consequently known as the father of trigonometry. Hipparchus produced a table of chords, the trigonometric function used by ancient Greeks that is closely related to the sine function. While he may not have come up with it first, Hipparchus was the first person whose systematic use of trigonometry was recorded by documented evidence. Essentially, he was the first person we know that used it, which has led some historians to claim that Hipparchus invented trigonometry. Trigonometry is a form of mathematics used to calculate the height of an object without having to measure the object itself. It allows us to develop a trigonometric ratio, a ratio of the length of sides of a right angle triangle. It involves three trigonometric formulae or ratios. We've got sine, cosine, and tangent. The word trigonometry comes from two Greek terms, trigon, meaning triangle, and metron, meaning measure. The study of trigonometry involves triangular measurements. The sides of the right angled triangles are given special names, the hypotenuse, the opposite, and the adjacent. The hypotenuse is the longer side, and is always opposite the right angle. The opposite and adjacent sides relate to the angle under consideration. There are three formulae involved in trigonometry. Sine, involving O and H, cosine, involving A and H, and tangent, involving O and A. In order to discover the missing length, you should first identify which side of the triangle is which. The longer side is called the hypotenuse, label this H. The adjacent side, A, and opposite sides, O, of the triangle are in regard to the angle shown. Once you know which of the sides are involved, you can then apply one of the three formulas. An easy way to remember this is the mnemonic Sokotoa. After you decide the formula to use, sum in the numbers. Let's try one together. If you have a right angled triangle with an angle of 35 degrees and a base length of 5 centimeters, what is the length of the hypotenuse? For this equation, we must use the formula cosine equals a over h. Once you've substituted in the information you have, you should end up with cosine 35 equals 5 over h. Next, make h the subject. h equals 5 over cosine 35. So the hypotenuse is 6.1 centimeters long. Throughout the years, trigonometry has proven to be an extremely useful mathematical tool, aiding us to create devices ranging from armillary spheres to navigational sextants. Many of the early applications of trigonometry provided a basis for modern devices. For example, using trigonometry, some of the first sundials were created in 120 BC. These were a founding part of conceptual time as we know it today. The first practical application of trigonometry was the measuring of mountains. To do this, mathematicians would imagine a horizontal line that would extend from the center of the mountain to point C. At point C, they would measure the angle of their line of sight from the horizontal line to the top of the mountain. They would then connect the points A and B to create a right angle triangle. Finally, they would measure the distance between points C and B. To find the height of the mountain, one simply has to apply trigonometry. In this particular equation, we are using an angle and the adjacent side to discover the length of the opposite side. We therefore have the equation tan 50 equals O divided by 100. This can be rearranged to tan 50 times 100 equals O, meaning side O must be 119.2 meters in height. Aristarchus, who lived around 2300 years ago, used trigonometry to find out how much bigger the sun was than the moon. Firstly, he noticed that at a half moon, the triangle formed by the Earth, Moon, and Sun has a right angle, meaning it is possible to use trigonometry. So, he set to work and measured angle X. He named the distance between the Earth and the Moon, EM, and the distance between the Earth and the Sun, ES. Using the equation ES over EM equals 1 over cosine 89.95, he worked out that the Sun is roughly 400 times bigger than the Moon. Bum bum ba da da